الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده سبحانه وتعالى حمد المعترفين بنعمائه العظيمة وآلائه الجسيمة اللهم لك الحمد أنت أحق أن تحمد ولك الشكر أنت أحق أن تشكر لك العتبة حتى ترضى ولا حول ولا قوة لنا إلا بك اللهم إنا نحمدك حمدا كثيرا طيبا طاهرا دائما مباركا فيه ملء السماوات وملء الأرض وملء ما بينهما وملء ما شئت يا ربنا من شيء بعد أهل الثناء والمجد أحق ما قال العبد وكلنا لك عبد اللهم لا مانع لما أعطيت ولا معطي لما منعت ولا ينفع ذا الجد منك الجد وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله ووسطيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وجاهد في الله حق الجهاد حتى أتاه اليقين اللهم صلي وسلم وزد وبارك على الحبيب المصطفى محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه ومن اهتدى بهديه وعمل بسنته إلى يوم الدين وارض اللهم عنا معهم بفضلك وكرمك أرحم الراحمين اللهم آمين I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I thank him for the endless blessings that he has granted us and our loved ones I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in words and action and I say alhamdulillah for the blessings that we know and the blessings that we know not. I bear witness that there's no deity worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is Allah's final prophet and messenger, the bearer of glad tidings, the role model to be followed. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. May the peace and the blessings of Allah be upon the beloved prophet, his family, descendants, companions, and followers and the men and women that walk in their footsteps, and I ask Allah to make us among them. Allahumma ameen. My dear brothers and sisters, I greet you with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with each and every one of us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our hearts. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our good deeds, to guide our steps, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shield us from the fire on the day of judgment, Allahumma ameen. The scholars of tafsir had an incredible perspective on the narrative on Qarun in the Quran. Qarun was one of the followers of Musa alayhi salam. He initially started his career as a righteous man. He was a slave, but he was from the people of Musa. The Hebrew slaves that followed Musa alayhi salam and decided to walk in his footsteps and take him as a role model. As Allah says in the Quran, Inna Qaruna kana min qawmi Musa fabagha alayhim. Qarun used to be a, an honest member of the Hebrew community in Egypt, but he turned against his own people. And his story is simple. It is more than likely that Qarun was a house slave of the palace of Pharaoh. That's why Pharaoh knew him. That's why he had access to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh saw weaknesses in him. He saw an opportunity in him. And he decided to turn Qarun from an honest man into basically an Uncle Tom, if you guys know what that means. Uncle Tom is the house slave that used to be uh, you know, on the southern plantations. If you lived in Louisiana in the 1700s, they would be like the field slaves that are collecting cotton in those cotton fields that have to suffer and struggle through the heat and humidity. And then there was the Uncle Toms, the house slaves who were serving their masters, making them food and doing their bed, but ultimately they are slaves. And this is how the slave master turned people against each other. Give privilege to one of the slaves, make him your spy, make him feel like he's better than the other slaves and he will become your best utility to control the other slave. I think a great modern example of that is the Palestinian Authority with all due respect. It is the Uncle Tom for the Israeli state. 
using them to oppress the rest of the Palestinian community and society, but ultimately all of them are enslaved by the same tyrant. And this continues to be the case to the present day. There is always a slave master and the slave master using their own slaves, turning, turning them against each other so that they don't see the common enemy. That is precisely what Pharaoh did with Harun. Started giving him privilege, started giving him wealth, started giving him money, making him feel that he's higher and better than the other slaves. In fact, he amassed so much wealth as a result of this process that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that, you know, وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْكُنُوزِ مَا إِنَّ مَفَاتِحَهُ لَتَنُوءُ بِالْعُصْبَةِ أُولِي الْقُوَّةِ I have granted him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he was granted so much wealth that the keys to all of his treasure chests and all of his safes would be so heavy that it would take so many strong men to carry those chains, those, those keys. And I think that, you know, the scholars of tafsir say that, you know, for every key chain, 10 men would have to carry it. But I think that there is a, a, a more interesting allegory here. I think that Qarun had such a diversity, a diverse portfolio, of wealth that he needed many men to be the upkeepers of his wealth. He needed a lot of bookkeepers. He needed a lot of tax people. He needed a lot of engineers. He needed a lot of guards and security people. He needed a lot of farmers. He needed a lot of men in order to maintain and sustain his empire, right? So whether it's actually strong men that carried the key chains or whether it's a metaphor for the management of that wealth the result is still the same. The heart of Qarun was corrupted. And he became his people's enemy number one. And he became the greatest trial for the Hebrews. I mean, imagine, it's a very, very dicey and sensitive situation. Musa alayhi salam is supposed to get those people out. There is no room for internal division. There is no room. You guys are all slaves and you're all suffering from the same enemy. You know, it should be straightforward deal, right? But it never is. Shaitan has a way. Shaitan has a way. It never is. You are a slave. You, you have an opportunity to break free and to get out of there and to go to the promised land and establish, establish the kingdom in the land of Palestine. Yet internal divisions and internal strife will have to spread. And the very righteous and honest Hebrews, their hearts were affected by what they saw because they see Qarun, one of them, a man from the Hebrews, Having all this wealth, and the human mind always translates wealth as blessing. When someone is very rich, they will say, no, I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed. Thank you. I'm very blessed. Not necessarily, right? Because maybe wealth is the greatest trial. Maybe it's the absolute scariest test <laughs> that you've ever experienced. It's not always a blessing, okay? Most of the time, it's a great trial. So they would watch this spectacle of wealth, and they would say, Qarun is so fortunate. Look at how blessed he is. God has given him so much. And Qarun arrogantly responds, Innama utituhu, innama utituhu ala ilmin an ilmin I was, I was given, them by virtu, given this by virtue of my own wealth. I did this. Mind you, he never denies the existence of God. He doesn't say God doesn't exist. He doesn't say I'm, I'm an atheist. I acknowledge God in everything, but I did this. I am the source of my wealth. It was my effort. It's my ideas. It's my resources. Don't tell me God did this. God didn't do anything. I did this for myself. And then the righteous people of the Hebrew community, they would scratch their backs and say, oh man, what if he's right? So other righteous and wise sages of the Hebrew community would respond to them. Waylakum. Khair. Woe unto you. What is wrong with you getting lured by the enticements of this man? Getting lured by the facade of wealth? This is not necessarily true. It's not necessarily God's blessing. The true blessings of Allah, that is what matters at the end of the day. And the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thawabullah, that is always reserved in the hereafter. Don't be lured by this. Don't be deluded by this. This is all a lie. And in order to settle the dispute, 
The scholars of Tafsir say that Harun decided to organize this huge event, this massive party, if you will. And he invited not only the who's who in town, he even asked all of his guests to invite their slaves as well. I mean, imagine, there is no mention in the Quran that Pharaoh freed him. He's still a slave. but He's a very, very rich slave, a very wealthy slave, right? And he invited all the who's who, you know, the notables of, of Egyptian society, and he asked them to invite all of their slaves as well. So everyone's there, thousands of people. Any person with note in, in that society was there attending that event. And he comes out of his palace, dressed in his very expensive outfits, clad in jewels, surrounded by his entourage, all of his treasure chests on display. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed for the catastrophe, the catastrophe to happen. فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ The very earth underneath his feet, the very foundation of his palace caved. And the earth swallowed Qarun, his entourage, his servants, his treasure chests, his furniture, his memory. Nothing is left of Qarun. Not even in the ancient inscriptions in Egyptian temples. Not in Luxor, in the Valley of the Kings. No mention of him in the hieroglyphs. Nothing. Even the very memory of Qarun was swallowed by the earth. In fact, there is a lake in Egypt today that is called Lake Qarun. And there's this legend among Egyptians that the treasure chests of, of Qarun is ac are actually buried under that lake. And to the present day, you know, some people do scuba diving at the very bottom trying to search for some of those, some of those treasures, which is illegal in Egypt. But people still do it because the legend still resonates to the present day, the massive amount of wealth that this man has. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wiped him off the face of the earth. But, but that's not what I wanted to talk about today. This is the year of the good life, and the good life is about balance. And sometimes we're scared. We want to become wealthy and have a comfortable life and make money and have good retirement plans and leave something for our kids. There's nothing wrong with that. But we also see examples of people who have given in so much to this dunya, and all they do is trying to make money and collect wealth. And sometimes, you know, the people of God, I hope, inshallah ta'ala, that we are among them. The righteous people who still hoard, you know, they want some success in this dunya, but at the same time, they're worried. They're worried. They don't want to, you know, go down the slippery slope. So they're trying to find that equilibrium. And no good life comes without balance. No good life comes, haya at if you want to live a good life, then you have to find a way to achieve that equilibrium. How do we, do we achieve that equilibrium? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shared with us the divine advice in the ayat on Qarun in the Quran. Shared with us very explicitly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبْتَغِ فِي مَا أَتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Seek through the resources that God has given you, seek an abode in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and in the process of doing that, do not forget your share in the life of this world. Okay, Two things, two pieces of advice the Lord shares with you. In fact, though this advice was shared you know, through the sages of the Hebrews. Those are the words that are directed towards Qarun. Ya Qarun, it's okay, we're not saying be poor. You can be wealthy. But utilize the resources that God has given you to build yourself an abode in the hereafter. Support the cause of your own people. You're wealthy. Come to the aid of your own people. Defend your own people. Protect the interests of your own people. Don't just follow Pharaoh, right? Seek the hereafter through the resources that Allah has given you. I always give this example, this analogy. You think of yourself as, as traveling across the continent. So you're traveling from San Francisco to New York. But you, may, you need to make a stop in Chicago for about five hours, right? Your flight lands in Chicago. You make a stop for five hours, and then you take another flight and you continue. Is Chicago your destination? It's not. It, it could be Houston. It could be 
Dallas, it could be any other city. It doesn't matter, right? That is not your destination. What is your destination? Your destination is New York. The journey of life, brothers and sisters, has to be clear. What is your destination? My destination is the hereafter. I will make stops. That's okay. And when you stop in Chicago, you will go and buy some food. Maybe, you know, buy a ticket to the business lounge. You can make yourself, you can make yourself comfortable a little bit. That's okay. But you can never forget your destination. Because your destination is not Chicago. Your destination is New York. A lot of people, they make the five-hour Chicago stop. And they build a house in the airport. And they get married in the airport. And they, and they have children and they hire servants at the airport. And then suddenly, you know, they get called to their gate. Oh my God, I totally forgot that I need to take another flight and go somewhere else. This is what happens to us. This is what happened to Qarun. This is how you strike the balance. I know that I will live a certain number of years on this earth, but I need to dedicate the resources that I have to invest in my hereafter. That is my goal. That is my destiny. Okay? But the other piece of advice is even more astonishing because this is how everything is perfectly balanced. Allah is not asking you to completely forget about this dunya, to completely forget about your happiness, to completely forget about joy or pleasure and dedicate yourself 100% in some type of a fake monkship. We're not supposed to be monks. We're not supposed to be monks. Allah says, Monkship or some type of a monasticism is not something that Allah wanted us to do. He wants us to get married and, and find love and, and, and experience happiness and wealth and, and be comfortable in this dunya. Okay? So the first one he tells you, your wealth is dedicated first and foremost primarily to invest in the hereafter. But in the course of doing that, do not forget some blessings in this life. All of us love the short-term gratification. And Allah says, I, give yourself some. Give yourself a little bit, but don't be distracted. Okay? See the balance? Invest your, your resources in the hereafter, but be balanced. Have the beautiful house so that you can have a roof over your head. Get married and enjoy your life and build a family. Have children that will be the fulfillment of your wishes and the answer to your prayers. Put some food in your belly so that you are healthy and strong. Wear nice clothes so that you have some appeal among the people around you. The Prophet ﷺ used to wear the nicest clothes. Wear perfume. Have a nice means of transportation, a vehicle, strong and reliable, that will take you to places. Travel to other parts of the world to enrich your heart and your mind. Enjoy life within the boundaries. Enjoy dunya within the border lines that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mandated for us. I ask Allah to accept our good deeds and forgive our sins. Brothers and sisters, raise your hands and speak to Allah Azza wa Jal from the heart. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وقائد الغر الميامين محمد الصادق الوعد الأمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وارض اللهم عنا معهم بفضلك وكرمك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم آمين My dear beloved brothers and sisters Today I shared with you the story of Qarun كان من قوم موسى فبغى عليهم Was a member of the community of Musa عليه السلام But he turned against his own people Committed aggression against his own people he was used as a house slave by Qarun, elevated him above the Hebrews 
in order for, to become his spy. Pharaoh used Qarun to defuse any potential resistance or rebellion against the ranks of the Hebrew slaves in Egypt, to drive wedges between people, to get him information about what is it that Musa is planning to do, to defuse the tension, to always keep the slave class as weak and as malleable as possible. That was the purpose of any Uncle Tom throughout the history, certainly was the purpose of Qarun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us his story in the Quran. And I said that a good life cannot be achieved without balance and equilibrium. Everyone wants wealth, but everyone is also scared of wealth. Everyone desires to be rich and comfortable, but the righteous people who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are always worried that wealth might corrupt them or steer them from the path. And I shared with you that balance, that equilibrium today that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us how to do it, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبْتَغِي فِي مَا أَتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ Utilize your wealth as an investment, as a bridge that will lead you to the hereafter. وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا And do not forget your share of this dunya either. Enjoy to a certain extent. Have a modicum of pleasure. That is all fine as long as you're conscious. And you might ask me, and I want to end the khutbah with this. You might ask me, how can I be sure that I'm conscious? Because that balance looks great in theory. But once life happens and I have investments and I have sources of income, you know, the lust for more becomes inevitable. It's very difficult for people to have the discipline to stop. You talk to some of these guys out there, these overachievers, these workaholics, you know, dude, you have millions of dollars. You know, you are compromising your family. Your kids are not doing well. Your wife is going to leave you. You never come to the masjid. What is it that you're working for? You have everything. He's like, well, you know, why should I stop? Why should I stop? It's that assumption that the more the merrier. You got to keep going. You got to keep grinding. You got to keep investing. You, you know, the figure needs to keep going up. That's not necessarily true. It's got to be a discipline at some point. See. It's okay to keep making more, as long as making more does not compromise your other responsibilities. You have a great family life, you know, you're very bonded and connected with your spouse, you never compromise in your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're raising great kids, you know, you're happy, you're not depressed, you're not anxious. If that is the case, and you continue to grow financially, there's nothing wrong with that. I'll be the first to tell you. You're giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the right in your wealth. You're giving your sadaqah and your charity and you're sponsoring orphans and attending fundraising events and more. Be my guest. God bless you. Make as mon much money as you can. But the, the discipline is required when making more wealth starts affecting and compromising every other component of my life. How do I make sure that that doesn't happen? Again, two pieces of advice in the same context directed at Qarun. Allah says, وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ وَلَا تَبْغِي الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ SubhanAllah. Be kind to others as Allah was kind to you. Do not allow your wealth to make you arrogant, to make you feel that you are above others, to start becoming more snobbish, looking down upon other people. You know, you cannot, I, I want people to call me with this title and to put this suffix and prefix with my name. I expect people to stand up when I walk into the room. I expect a special treatment everywhere I go. I want people to talk to me differently and to treat me differently and to put me on a pedestal. Now, once you step into that, you're not acting kindly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have done ihsan to you. I have granted you what you don't even deserve in the first place. Practice that same ihsan with other people. Be kind, be loving, be compassionate. Don't be you know, domineering and overbearing. Don't be arrogant. Don't act with haughtiness with other people. You know, don't, don't act with, with, with looking down upon everyone else. Be kind. Always smile. You know, always sit down with the poor and the destitute. Always thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings upon you. Always remind yourself who you are and where we came from and what you've become. And who is responsible for that? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, وَلَا تَبْغِي الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Do not use your wealth to seek corruption on this earth. How do you spend that wealth? What cause do you support? Who do you donate to? Who deserves your blessings? 
Do you give your cause to organizations and, and companies and people and governments that seek corruption on this earth? Or do you invest your wealth in good causes and beautiful ventures? That is really important. Do I impact the environment negatively? Do I have this massive carbon footprint on this earth? Am I extremely wasteful? Is my garage filled with items that I never use? Do I spoil food and after every dinner I dump massive amounts of food in the trash? How do you live? Do you spread corruption? Because corruption comes in so many different forms, right? What type of lifestyle do you have? Or do you, I'm enjoying my life. Alhamdulillah, I have a beautiful house, beautiful cars, beautiful family. I travel as much as I want. You know, I, I live a comfortable life. You know, I have nice clothes and everything. But the rest of my efforts and the rest of my blessings are dedicated to make the world a beautiful and better place. That is the litmus test, brothers and sisters. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this beautiful day to grant us that balance, that equilibrium. I ask Allah to make us wealthy through halal means. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us financial security. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us leave for our children what is going to be more than enough for them without corrupting them. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that wealth remains in our hands and not in our hearts. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we utilize the resources of rizq that we enjoy in this dunya to do good. I ask Allah to protect our hearts from corruption, to protect our community from disunity. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for each and every one of us to do what they can to raise the banner of Islam in this world. And Ya Allah, as you've gathered us here in this shape and form, we ask that you gather us in the highest level of Jannah. Allahumma ameen. Uh, I will share with you some announcements, inshallah ta'ala, uh, before we stand up for prayer. Jazakumullah khairan for uh, listening attentively. Uh, please do pass the boxes, uh, brothers and sisters, down the rows. Jazakumullah khairan for your support. Uh, again, uh, you've always made this a habit, and I'm proud of each and every one of you. Please use Venmo if you don't have any cash, or talk to our office manager on your way out, inshallah, to make a contribution with your credit card. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make your uh, rizq uh, sustainable and consistent uh, as much as your contributions. I wanted to uh, 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 urge all of you, inshallah ta'ala, today to purchase your tickets for our upcoming Mawlid celebration that is happening, inshallah, on October 15th. Uh, our guest speaker, Imam Alauddin, is coming all the way from Ohio. Myself, my brother Imam Sharif, and Imam Kamran, all four of us, inshallah, will speak at that beautiful evening to celebrate the birth and legacy of the beloved role model, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Seating is limited. We are going to hold events outdoors, inshallah. Dinner will be served. We will have nasheed, poetry, and other beautiful items in the program. Uh, uh, invite your non-Muslim friends. It's going to be a beautiful uh, celebration of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, titled Muhammad the Resilient Dreamer. Um, again, uh, talk to our office manager on your way out or visit tarbiyah.org, inshallah, to purchase your tickets. And I'm looking forward to seeing all of you, inshallah, there. Uh, we have a very exciting opportunity for, you, for those of you who would like to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala full time and be responsible for uh, creating a beautiful generation of young people in this community. Uh, we are hiring a full time uh, coordinator of the Nizami program. Uh, again, if you would love to work in a vibrant, growing team uh, and serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala full time, please consider applying for this position. Uh, we are now open for interviews. Go to tarbiyah.org uh, in order to submit your resume and your cover letter, inshallah. Uh, also, have some great news for you. Uh, we've been applying for a security grant with the Department of Homeland Security. There's a lot of federal funds available for mosques and churches, you know, to help you install security cameras, speakers, locks, and things like that to make places of worship secure. So, alhamdulillah, we've secured, you know, a, a really good chunk in that grant. We just need someone to volunteer to help us write up the details, communicate with the grant authority, you know, just keep the books. It'll be like a two-month process. So if you have a few hours to spare every week and you, and you have the, the, the mental capacity for something like this and you love the details, please talk to me personally uh, or send me an email or a text message uh, if you'd like to volunteer, inshallah, to uh, work out the de details of the process for us. 
youth soccer every Friday here at CHR, 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. Tafsirah tonight, inshallah, is at 7, and I'm very excited. We're going to start Surah Al-Mu'minun, one of my most favorite surahs of the Qur'an. We start at 7 p.m. Uh, refreshments are always served. This is here at CHR. Ummah nights, uh, 7 p.m. in Natomas with Imam Kamran, Prophet Musa, alayhi salam, part 2. Uh, Tian Quran here at THR this coming Sunday, October 3rd, after Fajr, uh, morning of spirituality, good food, and good company with the brothers and the sisters of our community. I uh, also am um, very excited to announce the launch of our THR Mommy and Me group. This is happening tomorrow, inshallah, at 11 a.m. All my sisters that would like to participate in our Mommy and Me Tarbiya group, please visit tarbiya.org. Uh, in THN only, indoor soccer meeting on October 2nd at 8 a.m. at Le Five Indoor Soccer in West Sacramento. Uh, also at THN, looking for a volunteer to help set up proper Wi-Fi throughout their building over there. Uh, also exclusive for THN, this is for our live broadcast, looking for someone who is willing to help organize uh, their after-school program, which is planned to be offered in January of 2022. Alhamdulillah, we are luckier than THN. We already found a coordinator to lead our after-school program. This is the Immersive Qur'an. Both Qur'an and Arabic will be taught twice a week, and we will announce that, inshallah, as the date nears. It's happening in, uh, in the spring. Uh, Brother Wissam's father, Dr. Muhammad al-Bayati, has been in the ICU for four weeks. He's struggling with very low oxygen levels because of his COVID. Uh, please pray for him. He, they're not able to remove him from life support yet. Uh, Brother Ihsan, um, Wali Zada is requesting dua for his brother Ramin uh, and Bahram, who are both in critical condition. Brother Adnan Jamil is suffering from liver complications and Sister Nareen, the sister who accompanied us and served food at the girls' camp. Her grandmother passed away in Pakistan. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept those who passed from the highest level of Jannah and to grant healing and shifa to those who are struggling. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ghfir lana dhunub wastur lana al-ayub. وتب علينا برحمتك لنتوب اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم يا ربنا بارك في والدينا وارفعهم إلى أعلى عليين اللهم يا ربنا ارض عنهما وبارك فيهما كما ربيانا ربونا صغارا اللهم يا ربنا بارك في إخوتنا وأخواتنا وارحم صغارنا يا رب العالمين اللهم احفظ أولادنا وبناتنا وأولاد المسلمين اللهم احفظهم وثبت على الحق أقدامهم واربط على قلوبهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم كن مع إخواننا المستضعفين في المشارق والمغارب يا رب العالمين اللهم كن معهم ولا تكن عليهم وثبت الأرض من تحت أقدامهم ووحد صفهم وانصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم اللهم اجعل الدنيا في أيدينا اللهم اجعل الدنيا في أيدينا اللهم اجعل الدنيا في أيدينا ولا تجعلها في قلوبنا إنك مولى ذلك والقادر عليه اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا موقوتا